Hi everybody, I'm Trisha Morris from Club Scrap and welcome back to the show. Today's project comes from me to you. I'm sorry, I meant from me to you. I've got a little bit of foam on the brain anyway, but let's get going with our project. Well, let's take a look at today's project. Ever since I saw Michael Strong use that hot wire foam cutter on his show, I had been dying to make this book because I thought it would make such a cool book cover to cut it out of foam. And you can see that's exactly what I did here. And I also made my back cover out of foam. This is totally recycled out of some package I got. And when you pick it up, you think it's gonna weigh about three pounds, but the book only weighs about three ounces. Let me show you how I did this project and I'm sure it's something you're gonna be able to do as well. The first thing you'll need is a piece of foam. And like I said, I got mine out of a box of furniture I'd purchased and it was all the extra foam inside protecting the pieces. And I trimmed it to three and a half by five and a half. And I'm using a ruler to measure my window. And I'm going to uh, mark the area where I'm going to cut a window for my shadow box. To make the mark, I'm using this Marva Yoshida Deco Color Marker because it colors really well onto this difficult surface. And about an inch and a quarter down from the top edge, I'll put my ruler and I'm just gonna make a line. The entire piece of foam will be covered, so it doesn't really matter if, if this is marked. Okay, so there's my window right there. Now, I just decided I wanted to keep my book as strong and sturdy as I could, so I'm going to initiate a center hole with the craft knife. Now, why wouldn't I cut the whole entire window with the craft knife? Well, simply, it's just a mess. It doesn't work very well. So I'm going to be bringing this over to my super hot wire foam cutter from Marva Yoshida. And this is an incredibly hot wire if the machine is on, but it's not, so it's actually cold. And I'm going to loosen the tension on the wire just slightly, just enough where I can remove this uh, stabilizing bar here. And I'll just thread it right through my window and then drop it down. So that's where my wire is going to live. And then bring that tension bar back up, tighten it and I'm ready to cut. Oh, this is so fun. In fact, my 11-year-old daughter saw this. She said, Mom, can I try it? And I said, of course. You just turn it on in the recessed power switch right over here. It also has a battery-powered option. And uh, so my daughter started to cut little puzzle pieces and she just did not want to stop. Finally, I had to tell her, this is Mom's toy. Then I'll make my way back to the center hole where I started and leave the wire in the middle and turn it off. And it's instantly cool. I'll release the tension, drop it down, Set that aside and then we get to pop out the window. And there you go. Okay, so here we have our window. And <clears throat> one thing I realized that um, would happen is when I wrapped paper around this window, the white foam could be exposed in the inside and I didn't want that. So I'm using this Deco Color metallic marker from Marva Yoshida and it just so happens to coordinate perfect with the paper I selected for this project. Now with the chisel tip, you just go in and color the inside portion of the foam window. So now I have my window completely filled in and I'm ready to wrap. And I wanted the paper that I used to wrap this to overlap on the bottom by about an inch. So here's how I calculated the size of my paper. Use my ruler and I just said, all right, I have an inch overlap here, so that's one inch. The height of my foam is a half inch, so that's one and a half. Wrapping it around, now I'm at up to five inches considering the width of my piece. Then another half inch on this side, that's five and a half. And finally, another inch to overlap on the back brings me to six and a half. And then the same math was done for the height of the book cover. Once I had that all, all selected, the first one I made, I just simply wrapped it around without scoring first. Works much better if you score. So let me show you how I did that. I've got Marva Yoshida's paper trimming buddy here, and it has a horizontal extender here. And in the cartridge, I have my scoring blade. Lots of blades to choose from, but this is what I need right now. Just open up the lever there, and I'm going to place my first score line at an inch, the width of my overlap. And then you'll make a second score line right next to it, a half an inch down. So once you've done the scoring on all four sides, you're ready to do some folding and a little bit of cutting. Now don't panic when you see this. I've got a template for you that you can look up to recreate this. It's really not that hard. I simply folded on all the score lines, cut out the corners, and created these little tabs. And you can see the base of my cover is the size of the foam. And then what you'll do is bring in the sides now, another lesson I learned here is that bookbinding glue and styrofoam, not the best of friends. It just didn't want to stick, but it really turned out okay because with the way I have this template set up and with my inch overlap here, it held together absolutely fine. Okay, so there you have 
your basic cover wrap, and this is the back cover, and then your front cover is beautifully wrapped, but can't see the window. Let me show you how I added that. So what you'll do is take a craft knife and cut an X from corner to corner, and that will create these four triangular flaps. Once those are made, um, you can actually take a bone folder and score along the window's edge. And what that will do is just simply create a nice clean line when you make that final fold. Put some heavy duty two-way tape on the flap and then turn it over so it sticks. And then for a little added decorative element, you can take a craft knife and just pre-pierce a hole into the side of the foam wall. Take advantage of this material because it offers a lot of opportunities. So a brad can be slid into the pre-pierced hole to add that decorative element. And finally, you can attach another sheet of paper cut slightly smaller than your book cover. And with book binding glue, attach it to the paper that overlaps. And then your cover will be complete. And this is what it's going to look like. Isn't it gorgeous? I absolutely love this as a book cover, and what an opportunity here for decorative elements. For the most part, you really don't have to buy a lot of things. You should have this around the house. Maybe a little tiny picture. I used a button in mine. If you just take a wire cutter and remove the shank from the button, let me just show you how this thing works. Here we go. Here's the collage piece. And again, this will reflect you and your personality, your theme for the book. Just attach everything at different heights. I've got things directly on the bottom. Maybe one layer of foam tape for that one, two layers for the button, and three layers for the caption. Well, now that you've mastered the art of making the cover, you gotta do it again and make yourself a back cover. Except you don't have to do a window if you don't want to. But if you wanted to, you could. All right, so here's the back cover. It's just the same. I'm gonna set these aside because next we need to tackle the inside pages of our book. Now, what I thought would be fun is if the inside pages had varying widths. Now, the height of every page is about five and a quarter inches, and um, that reflects the height of my book cover. That's the consistency. The width, however, I cut my pages to all different widths, and I used even scrap paper for making the cover pieces. And you can just simply fold your pages in half, and I'm going to show you how I made one of them. If you want to use a bone folder with this, you can. Mix a nice fold. And I wanted to have a decorative edge on my paper. So with the paper trimming buddy, there is an additional set of cartridges that you can exchange. So I can pop this out. This is really easy to use. Take out the scoring blade. And I chose the Victorian blade. I like the quick and easy change there. Now I'm gonna trim this to about two and three quarters. I'm cutting through two layers of paper here, but if I go forward and back, I cut through both just in one swoop, and now I have my page ready to go. I repeated that 15 times. Okay, the next thing I wanted to do is create a gilded look for all my pages, and I decided to proceed with a, a metallic marker here. And with that chisel tip, you can lay the chisel on the edge of your paper, away from you. And I'm gonna pull the marker toward me, and what that chisel tip will do is guide my marker in a perfectly straight line along the edge of my page. Works like a charm. Make sure you just protect your work surface beneath. But this creates a very cool look with the varying widths of my pages and the gilded edges. Love it. Well, I did that, like I said, 15 more times, pre-pierced some stitching holes, and then stitched my book together in a way that I've actually shown you before. So if you can look up the Make the Grade book episode, you will see how to create this stitched signature. With book binding thread, I actually inserted some ribbon into the long stitch areas, and I really like the spine of this book. And with an open spine cover situation here, I get to see this and enjoy it without covering it with anything. So let's take a look at how the page is looking here. There's the gilded edge. They're all different sizes. I made sure that my front and my back pages were as wide as they could be so that it gives me a stronger adhesion to the outside covers, okay? So those are the full three and a quarter inches. Now, if I bring this in, and just simply take some bookbinding glue, and I, I wanna give you a little tip here. You can take that same sheet of scratch paper and then just apply some bookbinding glue with the brush here, remove your paper if you want, and then place it onto the cover so that there's a little bit of margin at the top and bottom and flush on that left edge. Finally, you do the same thing with the front cover. So here's our cute little windowed cover, and here, of course, I had tons of extra pictures from a ski trip that we took. This book is gonna be placed at the home we always stay at when we visit Colorado to go skiing. And um, one other thing, when, when Mike did his uh, project with the foam cutter, I thought it would make the coolest foam stamps. So I made one, and let me just show you what I did here. You can see this swirl image. It's my own little foam stamp. And I just took some acrylic paint and just dabbed it on with a foam brush. 
and uh, stamped it right onto the picture. This was before it was in the book, however, so you might want to consider that. And then just let it dry thoroughly before you put it into the book. And I added that in several places. Here again, three of them. And because of the ski photos, I just had all this white space, sky space. And then there's my daughter Emily. You can barely pick her out doing a mogul run in Colorado. So anyway, this is just really a fun project. Just be sure to budget a little bit of time to finish the book and not as much time to make the book. You know, if you're not real confident with your stitching skills and you this makes you a little nervous, you can use any kind of binding structure to create your book. I'm going to show you another fun variation. In fact, this was the very first prototype, so to speak, of the project that I made. Now, what's fun about this one is I did a flag book with an accordion spine. So there's the accordion. And if I open it up, ta-da! Isn't that fun? All these little flag pages attached to the accordion. Well, I think this is material for another show. I know you'll have a blast making this project, and I can't wait to have you give it a try. Just remember one thing, have foam. I mean, fun. I'll see you next time. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.